So this is uh, RV10 video build log uh, entry number two, continuing work on the vertical stabilizer rear spar, uh, section 6-1 of the plans. Uh, this is step three. So what I'm doing here is I'm just match drilling the number 40 holes through the spar, uh, spar flanges and into the uh, the left and right spark caps. So that's what I'm doing here, uh, drilling those holes and cleat going as I go along. So you can see here that the holes uh, through the spar flanges into the uh, spar caps go up a lot farther than the holes through the spar web and into the spar caps. And that corresponds to the 16 inch uh, area that we removed from the spar caps uh, when we were fabricating them in step one. And so here I've uh, completed one side and flipped it over and now I'm working on the other side. Same drill over here. So that's that. That's pretty much the drilling. Uh, now, just like uh, just like usual, the next step is to take everything apart and deburr those holes. So that's what I'm doing, taking out all the Clecos, and uh, then I'll deburr the holes. Probably seems like I am fanatical about using the vacuum cleaner all the time uh, between steps. It's you know, it just depends. Those holes where you're match drilling and, and you're drilling a hole uh, in the spark cap that you know wasn't already there, so you're not just enlarging an existing hole, uh, you're you know, creating a new hole. That actually creates a, a pretty good bit of uh, you know aluminum uh, chips and and little curly cues. And after a while, those you know it kind of makes the table pretty gritty. Uh, so I don't want to scratch things up. Uh, Needlessly, so that's why I tend to clean up as I go. So on the spar, uh, the inside of the spar um, uh, flanges, there I was just holding my little deburring tool, the little hex deburring tool, in my fingers and twisting it. It's really the only way you could get in there, and it's really all it needed. And then here I've got the same tool inside, uh, you know, in a cordless screwdriver, and just like I did in the previous video, just uh, a little bit of not even really any pressure, just the weight of the tool, and then you know, blip the switch on the screwdriver just enough to, you know, spin it around a couple of times and work my way along. And that's pretty much all this step, uh, step three was, was drilling those holes and then, you know, cleaning things up. Uh, I do go up and down the everything with a scotch brake pad as well, kind of clean it up. And then I put it all back together, and that's it. So while that guy cleans up, I thought I would talk about this part right here. Uh, this is the vertical stabilizer bottom rudder hinge bracket. Uh, there are three rudder hinge brackets. There's a top, a middle, and a bottom. 
uh, when I received my kit, my empennage kit from Vans, I was missing the parts uh, that make up the bottom butter hinge bracket. That's, that's DS1010. Uh, so I let them know, and you know, sorry about that. We'll get those right out to you. Uh, well, but they are back ordered. So it took a little while, but no big deal. I didn't need them yet. Uh, and the, so the part finally came in, and it turns out there's been a revision. So uh, there's the top rudder hinge bracket, the middle rudder hinge bracket, and the bottom rudder hinge bracket. And uh, each one is made of two identical parts that are attached to the, uh, the web of the rear spar. And, you know, you, you, one is attached with the flange up, the other attached with the flange down, and, you know, that creates the bracket. So uh, this bottom bracket has been, re the, the two individual parts has been replaced by this VS010-1. Uh, so it's a single part. It's uh, mounted with four number eight uh, countersunk screws uh, instead of rivets. And there were some other changes as well. There's, uh, as you can see in the picture there, the blue part is a new, uh, new shape for the rudder stop. So that's a little different. That uh, mounts to, to that hinge bracket, I believe. Uh, and then there's, you know, the mounting hardware has changed. Of course, there is the number eight screws, and then there's some other things in there as well. Uh, so they sent me all that. And uh, they also sent updated revisions, updated uh, versions of several sections of the plans. So uh, basically any section that, that deals with that part or even you know happens to have a diagram that happens to have a picture uh, or show that part has to be updated so uh, you know I got a new section 6 a new section 7 uh, I think 11 and or 12 uh, and so basically you know you can look at the revision number on each page and tell whether something really changed on that page or not uh, so you know it's really just a handful of pages that actually changed but uh, for whatever reason, they send, you know, the whole, uh, the whole section. So I just replaced the sections out of my, uh, my binder with these new sections. And, uh, I did keep the old ones just in case I need to refer back to them for some reason. And, you know, pretty straightforward. One thing I am curious about that I'll be keeping my eye on, um, when the vertical stabilizer is assembled to the tail cone, uh, the heads of these number eight screws that attach this hinge bracket uh, will not be accessible because of the uh, rear bulkhead of the tail cone itself. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think you would need access to those screws. Uh, you know, in the prior revision, it wasn't screws, it was rivets, as far as I uh, can remember. So you wouldn't have had access to those either. Uh, but it's something that, you know, um, something that I thought about and so I may do a little investigation and see if you know is there a, a new revision for that bulkhead that happens to have uh, access holes in it for the heads of these screws um, you know I could I could cut holes in mine uh, it shouldn't hurt anything I don't think I'll do that uh, but that's a little ways down the road I can I can uh, think about it some uh, but yeah I mean I don't know why you would need access to the screw heads um, you know if you if you needed to take this hinge bracket off you'd probably need to take the upper and uh, you know you you can't take the upper and middle hinge brackets off without drilling out rivets and you know getting access uh, to the inside of the spar web which would mean removing parts of the skin I believe um, uh, you know, I, I don't see the advantage necessarily of having access to those screw heads, but uh, it's just something I thought about. So, uh, we'll see. So, that's it. Uh, there's the spar all clecoed back together uh, with the holes drilled through the uh, spar flanges. End of step three.